This is the seventh video in a series on how to use Model Builder to automate geoprocessing tasks. In the previous videos, we looked at how we could construct a model um, to analyze Boston 311 data, to map it out, aggregate it by neighborhood, and then calculate a series of measures of the number of reports per person in each neighborhood, the number of reports per, per square miles, and then finally the percentage of reports that were marked overdue status per neighborhood. We then um, created a consistent symbology for those outputs so that we would always show the same symbolization scheme uh, whenever we ran the model. We then parameterized the model so that the user could specify which file they want to input into the process and then run the exact same process on that new file and have the output uh, be put into the table of contents and, and shown in ArcMap. So um, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at how we can use a process called inline variable substitution so that not only will it create um, a, a, the process will run for each file that we choose but we can also give each file a unique name that's specific to the year of the data since we're working with files that have been broken out by year. So you'll notice right now that in the output uh, that's created for the uh, analysis each one has um, a different symbolization for or rather a different value that's being symbolized but the names of the files themselves um, are kind of cryptic and it's not totally clear uh, which data set we're working with so I want this file name to, to say the year of the data and have something more sensible that's understandable to the user so in order to do that I'm going to introduce a new variable into the model that's going to hold the year so we're going to basically prompt the user to specify the year of the data that we're working with. So um, this is another uh, model specific tool so we access it through the insert option and we're going to choose create variable and this variable is going to hold essentially any kind of value so I'll just choose any value and hit OK and then this value here is where it's, it's going to be uh, going to hold the, the year that we choose. So I'm going to make it a model parameter so that it prompts the user and I'm also going to rename it so that it's clear to the user what uh, what this is. So I'm going to call this data year, and that's what the user will see in the dialog box. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this variable that's, that the user inputs, and I'm going to insert it into the name of the file that's created to produce these uh, feature layers. So I'm going to go to the end here. So at this point, I'm going to come to each of the Make Feature Layer uh, tools at the, toward the end of the model, and I'm going to insert an inline variable in each of them so that it will input the year that I put uh, for the data year variable. It will insert it into the name of the output. So I'm going to double-click on the Make Feature Layer for one of them, and this is the one for the reports per person. So I'm going to replace the output layer name from the default to something that says um, Boston 311 reports per person and then I'm going to put in percentage sign data year percentage sign so data year is the name of that variable we just created the percentage signs indicate that this is a variable so it's going to pull the valuable from that variable input and plop it in right here so it should say the year of the data that we're working with so I'm going to essentially do something similar for each of the make feature layers, but they'll be slightly different because they need to be in order to have a separate output. So that was reports per person. This was reports per square mile. So we'll replace that. Reports per square mile. And then the data year. And then the last one over here, same basic thing. This is percentage overdue. Okay, and so each of those then has a different name, which is important for the, in order to produce separate output for that, and it'll replace those values. So we'll save the model, and now we're ready to run it again. So we'll specify the input year. So we'll say 2000. Oops, we need to actually specify the file. So let's use the 2011 data this time, and we'll put in the year, which is 2011. And then we'll hit OK and let it run.
All right, so the model is completed successfully, and we have our output as a, as a series of three layer files that are properly symbolized. You'll notice also, too, that if you look closely at the table of contents, now each of these items is labeled with the year of the data. So now it's abundantly clear what data we've uh, pulled from, and so the user knows exactly uh, what they've got. So I want to add one more thing to this model, just to finish this all off. Because currently what happens is uh, these layer files, um, although they exist, the data that they call from is always going to be overwritten every time you run the analysis, which is good in, in, in that it allows you to rerun the model repeatedly without getting any um, errors or ac accumulation of files. But you may want to cre create uh, an option, uh, or rather allow the user to produce an output file that is essentially the culmination of this analysis, which they can come back to later. So we're going to add a real simple item in here that allows the user to create that and save it permanently. So we're going to edit the model again, right-clicking on it and choosing Edit. And what I want to do is I want to take this final output here, and I want to turn it into um, a, a, a permanent feature class that will be saved wherever it is that the user wants. Um, so to do that, um, I'm, I'm starting with here just so you know, I'm not starting here because these feature classes are, the, are only for the purposes of symbolization. Uh, whereas this is going to allow me to retain a final file uh, feature class that can be um, uh, you know, used in any other context uh, but it contains all the necessary data. So I'm going to convert this to a permanent feature class so I'll need access to uh, our toolbox again and I'm looking under the conversion tools in order to do that. So under con data con uh, conversion tools to G GeoDatabase I want to choose feature class to feature class, I'm going to drag that in, and then I'm going to um, take as the input to that this item right here. Oops, sorry, you can't do it with a. It has to be the actual output. There we go. This guy. That'll be the input features. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to um, control this, so it's going to give me an output location and an output feature class. So what I wanted to do is I want the feature class to represent, again, to use that inline variable that we created previously. So we're going to say Boston 31 run reports and then oops, data year. And again, just like before, the first part of the name will have uh, this. This will be the same, but the data year will pull from that variable. I'm not going to put an output location quite yet, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify that the output location is a parameter so that the user will specify where they want to save this permanent file to. So I'm going to, when I right click on it, I'm going to choose make variable from parameter and choose output location. And so that's going to um, introduce this item over here, and so then I right click on that and I'll choose model parameter. And so what's going to happen is the user will be prompted for this item right here. But the name of the file will be essentially determined uh, by the year that we've, in, what, that, we've specified, that we've specified. So now I'm ready to go, so I'm going to hit save the model, close it, and now I can rerun it when we remove this item. So, although I don't have to, it'll actually get replaced. And I'm going to go back to my toolbox, I'm going to run the model, and you'll see now it's got a, a, a new um, variable here, so I'm going to specify Finally, the, this time the 2016 data, just to show you how it can run with whatever data you put into it. The data is 2016. The output location. This time I'm going to actually specify that the folder, the Boston, is the output location. And you'll see what it does on the output point. So now we're ready to run the model. All right, so the model has run successfully, and we see once again that we've added three properly symbolized layers to our map here, and with inline variable substitution again, each of them is labeled with the appropriate year that we specified. But in addition, we added one more new element, and that is that we um, uh, uh, added an output, a permanent output, 
um, into our um, folder that contains the um, the final output. So you'll see right here, it's created a layer file in that same in the Boston 31 folder, and it also contains the year of the data. So it's actually used the same inline variable substitution. Notice, notice that this is a shape file that it created since I specified an out, a working directory. If I had specified a geodatabase as the output location, it would have created the feature class within that. So it's a very flexible tool. So there we have it. We have a uh, model that is essentially a tool that can be initiated uh, at will and will prompt the user to specify both the input file and the output location, generate pre-rendered uh, symbolization files that are properly named so that we know what we're looking at and create a permanent file in the location of our choice that we can then come back to later so we don't have to repeat the process if we want to retain that data.